Hello, whoa, whoa, and welcome back to Python with another series regarding data science. And yes, today we are looking at the panda package. This has nothing to do with the cute little animal, but stands for Python data analysis. So as the name suggests, Panda is an open source manipulation and anal an analysis library for Python. And yeah, has many, many similarities to NumPy. So if you are coming from NumPy or, or already learned NumPy, Pandas is perfect for continuing. Because now we are finally getting to the interesting stuff. Now interacting with Excel files or even being able to create new Excel files. And yeah, installing Pandas is pretty simple. You just have, I will print, uh, type it as a comment. You have, yeah, uh, you have just used your console and type in pip install Pandas. Or if you're as lazy as me, just open any project with your IDE and in PyCharm it's possible to just import pandas and yeah if you move your cursor of your mouse onto pandas you can install the package and now PyCharm is installing the package just for the project I'm working on but that's enough for this tutorial series. And now it's finished, I didn't even have to pause the video. So in this series we will work with NumPy and Pandas, so if you are new to data science I recommend watching first the uh, NumPy series. In this part of the series we are just handling the yeah most common main data structures of uh, Pandas. And yeah, so today we are looking at Panda series and Panda frames as structures. And for that we are working with lists and dictionaries in Python. First let's create our first list. We call it the list the list. Equals one, two, three, four, five. And yeah, let's create Dobby the dictionary which is you yeah you will be shocked to hear shocked to hear that it will be a dictionary I just skipped forward because the typing was not necessary and I forgot the comma. Yeah, so we are, will use to create our data structures, we are using the list and the dictionary. First let's create our first panda structure which is the series. So our first series equals pd. Let's, by the way, let's import pandas as pd. pd point c t series. No, I'm just stupid. A series has to be uppercase because it's a class. And yes, as an input, let's see. He wants any data. We can, even like in NumPy, we can define a d-type. So let's just put in the list. List is a list. Let's run the code just for looking if everything went right. It, it does. And now let's print our first series. And yeah, it works quite well. And yeah, he p doesn't even print only the numbers, he prints the index. So, yeah. Let's print the index white. So it is, it 
index always begins with zero. Perfect. So like I said, he is already printing or giving us the index in the left column and in the right column it is our input. If we alter our input, he is the right column changes. So let's yeah undo our altering and let's get to the data frame. Yeah, let's create our first data frame. Equals PD point data frame. Dobby the dictionary is our input. And let's print our first data frame. Perfect. Now you can look at the out output as your personal worksheet beginning with the first column and the second column and yeah what's really 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 important is that each list first of all each key of the dictionary you are creating a data frame because a data frame you should uh, use a dictionary as an input and yeah Each dictionary should contain one key, which should be... Oh, I didn't even try it out yet. What will happen if we are using an integer? Nothing. Uh, the integer will works as well. So any key sh should be possible, but a um, key, which can't be a list, of course, because a list is not hashable. Oh, I misclicked. But yeah, strings, integers, floats will work. But what won't work is if the length of a list is not equal to the length of the other lists. Or let's just say each list, each value of the key has to be in the same length. So let's just create an arrow. He creates a value arrow. All arrays must be of the same length. So we can, if we want an empty cell, I mean, if a cell should be empty, we are using a non, which is the same as, oh, I already created a space for that. Uh, we are just using non, which is comparable to null in Java, for example, or null in C. And yeah, now he gets us none. So we can also print a certain column of our yeah data frame just by typing in, for example, name like we would do it in a dictionary. And yes, now we are getting the index, still the index, but only yeah the column which has name in it and yeah we can also use describe to describe to get the type of each object in the column so now he's counting each uh, each cell each cell is unique top is hubert and so on so this is kind of cool if you are, for example, having a sheet which contains really much empty cells and identical data. If you want to cal calculate with it, this can be quite useful. Kind of similar, but also different. Okay, you can't do anything with that information. There is the info method. And yeah, let's just try out what does give us the info method. Give uh, it gives us even more information, like the yeah how many much memory is used for our column, and yeah how much non-null objects are in the column. There are four because we one is none, like already said, and so on. You can try it yourself by yeah using different values, d types, and try it for yourself because in the next video we are gonna 
we are gonna look at Excel sheets and CSV files and how we import them, how we create new ones. I don't really know if it's just one video or if we are splitting that in different videos, but yeah, during these videos we will learn new functions, new types, and yeah, uh, thank you very much. <sighs> thank you very much for <laughs> watching my video. If you are wondering why I'm pronouncing certain things so strangely, I am yeah still sick a little bit, but it doesn't help. And yeah, I still wanted to make videos because they are fun to make. Have a nice evening, dinner time, night time, morning time, breakfast time, lunch time, whatever time it is. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Hello, ho ho, and welcome back to Python. And welcome back to Pandas. And today we are gonna handle two really important topics kind of essential for pandas and that is importing and exporting data. So like we are using our first Excel files and CSV files and importing them to Python using them as data frames. Data frame was the new structure we learned in our last video. We can calculate with them creating our new data f data data frames and altering the data frames we imported and then we are exporting them, creating new data files in the progress or creating new CSV files, new Excel files. There of course there are other kind of files you can ex and import with pandas like JSON files, HTML files, but yeah I want to focus on the two files you maybe know from work, you saw them before. And yeah, for the video I created two test files. Let me copy them in my project. By the way, I didn't uh, tell you any bad jokes lately, so here's a joke regarding Excel. What's an Excel user's favorite type of music? Spreadsheet music. And now let me be alone for a few minutes because I have to feel the shame of telling you this joke. Okay, I paused the recording and here I'm back. Now let's go to, let's import pandas. And yeah, on the left side you see the CSV files. We are starting with CSV files. Of course we have to install panda because I started a new project, SPD. And the function or method you are using for importing the CSV is PD for pandas point and yeah, this is kind of a mis uh, miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle because yeah, read CSV is the first function we are seeing, and we just type in omalk CSV. I called it like this because I want it. Now let's print it, and w I wonder what will happen. Yeah, here we have the on the first line which doesn't have an index because it's the header we have. So on the lines uh, 0, 1, 2, it gives us the index because if we open our CSV file it will be like 2, 3, 4. Uh, we have Thomas separated with a semicolon and catchphrase BMI and yeah. So on Thomas, I like total mass is his catchphrase. His name, his name not. His BMI is 30. John Joe is Johans is al is also overweight because his BMI is 34 and so on. And yeah, this acts like a data frame. If we even again, if we look at PD read CSV and move our cursor, we should get. You should return a uh, data frame, I guess. Let me look. If we move our yeah, if we move our cursor to the CSV, it says uh, CSV data frame. So we got a data frame like the one we worked in our previous video with, and we can 
do stuff like yeah get the shape you know maybe you know it from numpy shape is the shape of our file like the dimensions it should have two dimensions and it has we can get access to a certain column like for example the names key of our name okay oh okay I get uh, I think it's one string so if we uh, Printing zero square bracket zero. We get nothing. Okay, okay. I'm just stupid because I forgot the separator. Um, yeah, the neighbors in the background are playing music loudly. I hope it is not copyright claimed music because I don't want any copyright issues. Apart from that, I don't mind that. But I don't even know if you can hear the music my neighbor's playing. Sounds kinda cool if you ask me, but yeah, let's get back to the topic. Now, after we used our separator, because yeah, CSV uh, files have always a separator, in this case we used a semi I used a semicolon or a semicolon. Uh, now we can get access to, for example, the column name or the column catch phrase or the column BMI. And yeah, there are man many other functions. For example, you can get the axis, and with the axis, you can let's first print the axis. And with the access, you can gain access to the head file or the header file, like getting index 2 and then values. And let me have a little look. Yeah, now we have our header files the first row, name, catchphrase, and BMI as a list. Oh, or it's more in a way, but yeah. That's for that. Now let's dive deeper and import an excel file equals pd point read excel and uh, I even know because I started a new project I will get an exception it will raise an error first use type it And the exception is import optional dependency open pi xl. So we are import open pi xl. And we have to install it using pip install or conda. But if you are watching this tutorial, you should already know what pip install is and how it works. Now after importing it we have our excel file and we don't need a separator, we can just print it. We are just looking at the surface by the way of importing and yeah, exporting the files. So there are much more you can do with that. Yeah, and we get our data frame. And now if we are looking at our, what was it? The shape, yes, the shape. We are getting 3-3 three, three because it is a 3.3 three three matrix. And yes, we are typing head. We should now get, yeah, we get the head as a list, perfect. Oh no, we get the entire data frame, of course, this was the values, I'm stupid again. Here we go. And what can we do? We can, of course, get access to certain columns, like before with the CSV file. Oh no, we can't. But I guess I just mistyped. Yes, I typed it wrongly. And yes, 
I don't want to repeat everything of the previous video regarding data frames, so let's now try to save our files. Let's first create our data file, I mean data frame. New data frame equals names. Hey, don't. Okay, I will pause it and write uh, the data frame. Okay, I wrote this data, fa uh, data, f data frame. Reformatting it. This looks better if we. Let's reform it again. Reformat. And yeah. Looks better in my opinion this way. Now let's create our new data frame. Seems to have worked. And yeah, now let's try to save it as a XLSX or an Excel file. And what's of course what is the most difficult part is how we name our file. Let's as Philo new equals and yeah, Philo new point. I was too Excel. And yeah, name should be point x uh, s x. Try it. Okay, here you can see the file I created. Like I said, he already got us the indexes and yeah the header file the header row and yes the values and everything like I set it up. Now let's do that with a CSV file. Should be the same here we can see it he used commas as a separator and yeah as you can see the exporting worked perfect perfect as well this is our csv file yes what else can i say regarding this topic so now we should have handled everything regarding import and exporting excel files csv files and yeah, I hope you liked the video. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Have a nice evening, dinner time, night time, breakfast time, morning time, night time, whatever time it is. Bye bye. Hello and welcome back to Python. Welcome back to Pandas. And yeah, with another part of the tutorial series, today we are going to have a closer look at the series structure type. First, let's import pandas as pd and yes as a quick reminder the series was a structure type which got as an argument for example a list and yeah let's give the baby a name like series one and now let's print series one and we are getting our list of integers and yeah they are getting an individual index. Now what we can do instead of a list we can use a dictionary as an argument. Let's try that. PD point series. By the way the main topic are uh, index uh, index C not indexes. What's the uh, multiple of index? But I guess it doesn't matter. So index is our today's topic and yeah we can we can use a dictionary as an argument And 
and yes of course we should print it now as you can see instead of 0, 1, 2 which is a common default index we get ABC and let's again print series 1 for comparison here you get 0, 1, 2, 3 and here you get ABC so let's get our PD series, series 1 this I want also a custom index for that series so what are we gonna do we're typing index equals and a list and in this list I wanna write a b c d and yeah as you can see now the also the series 1 has custom indexes indexes and now let's create an error because if the yeah number of index uh, index C doesn't match the number of yeah elements in the list we get a value error so that can't happen but now let's try the same in this one we can even so we are um, by using a dictionary we kind of already told what kind of indexes we want we still can yeah handle over a list and let's just type a b c now let's out comment the first series because it shouldn't confuse anyone so here you have ABC 133.44 now if we are that's kind of fantastic because if we are now adding an element to the list whoops, it doesn't uh, raise an L exception instead it adds the D and gives us an NAN which means there is no value for D now let's again type in A and we get again 1.0 because we already said one, uh, A matches 1 and yes we can use A as often as we want and we always will get printed out the 1 no, now this makes slicing a little bit more difficult because my coffee cup is empty I just realized but yeah I will hold on until this video is finished so we can gain access to certain elements like before we get A and now he's printing every A which is in the index list yeah here is four times the uh, letter A, so he is printing four times the, uh, the float 1.0. And what we can't do, we can't slice that. We can't say from A to B. And from 0 to 1 shouldn't be possible. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's quite possible. We can also say, for example, 1. And yeah, if we now gain access to 0, we should get an, we should get, yeah, we get a key error because it starts with 1. And now is a difficult thing because we can't really slice that. We can't say until A, we can just say until 4 but we can't say 0 because we used a custom number as an index and the index 0 doesn't exist so it starts from 1 to yeah the end which should be A okay of course we don't need to create the list inside the creation of our series we can still Define a variable and say 
index equals a variable because if we do it the same mm -hmm. oh no I'm stupid because we are now create must create a data frame and a comma and now we get the problem that we kind of yeah created our index and then we created our new uh, dictionary. So the second argument in the data frame is really the index and if we print it he uses the keys as columns and yeah the numbers as rows ignoring by the way the values because yeah I guess he can't he doesn't know what to do with the values but this is a topic for another video. Let's stay or stick to the series. So, yeah, we can, of course, we can give a name to the series like Haribo, Haribo. And yeah, that's not that kind of interesting because yeah let's print the entire series oh that's why we will ignore the b because we only printed he says just name is Herbo. that will get interesting if we are looking at the data type and creating a data type uh, data type not data frame and creating a data frame out of many series we can just use that now can dive deeper in another video but yeah, series 3 and yeah, series 4 equals mm. Now let's try to create a data frame. So now I created a series. Uh, I created, uh, no, I created three series and I created a data frame containing the series. And as you see, he won't get any values. So let's instead using lists because he's n he doesn't know how to handle these. And now let's just shorten our <laughs> list. Yeah, and now as you see, he is using as the columns and the, and that's a quick reminder because yes, we still need to have a dictionary as an input. And for that, let's create a dictionary using keys as and yes now we get our data frame and now let's yeah change the values of our index that's just by the way a little looking forward because this will be like said an, an own video and as you see the index is now the rows and the data, not no, not the data, the keys of the data frame are the the columns. Yeah, that was the word uh, word I'm looking for. Like here, now it's changed to AD. And yeah, let's do. Um, be more specific, let's just change the values a little bit. And now you see he is starting with the column and is getting down.
but that's everything for today. Yes. I hope you could learn something and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye bye, have a nice evening, dinner time, whatever time it is. See you. Hello and welcome back to Python and welcome back to Panda with another part of the Panda tutorial series and like I already promised in my previous video, today we are looking at data frames and indexes in data frame and we are even have a little look at parental indexes in data frame. I hope this was the right word for it because I was, yeah, indexes in data frame can have their child indexes which will make the sheet a little bit more readable but yeah let's first dive in and let's start with the simple part because the parental stuff is a little bit more complicated kinda yeah interesting because being parents is also complicated now what I was what I want to say it's sounds complicated and yeah I have to admit it is a little bit more complicated than our previous topic but I guess we will handle it as well but enough talking, let's code. Let's just import pandas as pd and let's create a data frame. Datey, baity, gatey, latey equals pd point data frame. As an argument, we again use a dictionary, key is a. Now, as a value, we are using a pd point series. This uh, the series as a quick reminder usually takes a um, list as an argument. Let's create another list pd point series. Now let's make this series a little bit longer because I want to show you something I already covered in a previous video, but yeah should be also a quick reminder. And I forgot a comma. Not a point, a comma. Now let's print our cool diction no, cool data frame which is called datey baity gatey. And yeah. As you see um, this will be important later. We, um, he will get automatically set our indexes 0 to 7 and yeah if because the first series only has six a list with six elements the second and seventh will get not a number but uh, yeah the B list will get the values I wrote in the list and yes what we now want to create is we want to add an index. So let's let's write index and again write a list. One, two, three, four, five. Now as you see he skipped the first element because yeah by default an index begins with zero. He is just um, looking okay what does the series have at index 1 2 3 4 5 now if we say index equals 1 2 3 4 5 let's add a 6 because as I remember correctly it will otherwise raise an exception now it will start with the first element because we told him the index is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But 6 is not element, it's not uh, here in the list and this is a kind of boss list. The list what tells the other lists what to do if you, if it's easier to imagine it like that. And yeah, you can also type index equals now let's sync something up. A comma B comma C comma D. If I remind it correctly, it will get an exception. Yes, because we have the, the list of the indexes has to be the list of the values. So let's add another values. 
D E F G H. And now he is using not a number. Why is he not using not a number? Because all of the main indexes don't yeah match with an index we gave our B series. So let's just type in A. And yes, now we get one element of our B series. Of course not of our A series because here is no index A. Now what you shouldn't do, but we will do it for experimental purposes. You shouldn't mix up data types and structures, but yeah, as mentioned for experimental types, we now add a list. Ah, let's not use such common ones. And yeah, of course it will get an error because we need at least six elements. And yes, he's just um, kind of using the same indexes the, the, like the index we gave him. Now if we delete our index, and of course a comma, we get a we get an error because, and now that's kind of funny, the array length is only 6, but he is kind of adding the indexes. So the elements of the first and the second index are 14, so now each array um, should contain 14, uh, 14 elements. Uh, should I do it? Yeah, come on. We have got plenty of time left. 7, 8, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, because we already have 6 two times. I, if I mentioned correctly, this was 8 elements, so let's add other elements. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Here again. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you will get another error because, and that's the point, he is not adding this one anymore. So it doesn't matter what we really do, he will raise an exception anyway. If we are deleting everything like before, he want an index with 14 and if we are giving him 14 he will get one to 6. So let's just not do that or if we are doing that we should add our index A, B, C. Now I messed something up, but what did I mess up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we added a list now. Yeah, it's obvious. I'm just stupid. Um, the C list um, needs the required indexes because the C list doesn't have an index by itself. It can't even have because it's not a series. So if it is a series like that I if I re remember correctly it still needs an index okay now this is bad for experimenting now it will now it won't wor when it's a series it won't raise an exception if it doesn't match but as soon if we delete the series and just using a list it will yeah kind of get salty. But here we are, now it, everything is happy. So now let's go to the second part. The second part are the yeah, kind of parental indexes. It's not that complicated if you just uh, get it once. Now just let's delete our index stuff. Can use it later. What we want to do now, 
we, we first and always use just yeah integers or um, integers or now I'm having it integers or characters or strings as a keys what we want now is we want to use tuples and I won't tell you what will happen you can see it for yourself okay I'm uncreative and will just copy it If I didn't mess it up, it should work now. It does. Now what is kind of interesting, we have two headers of the columns. One A, which is the parent, and the child's are ABC, ABC, ABC. And yes, because um, an index is missing, he added everything to the added everything to it so let's just make it a little bit more readable let's add an index and yeah now it's a little bit more readable B is of course always not a number because this index doesn't exist let's just do a one here and a two here so that B gets at least some values so that is when you kind of adding parents now let's just if we do something which shouldn't happen nothing will happen so this, this is nothing if we are using just one tuple he is just making uh, yeah he is deleting that or not anymore using the parental children stuff and using the tuples as one hashable header line okay of course you can add any dimension you can use three tuples just keep in mind that every tuple every key tuple has to be then has to be has three elements it's kind of gotten really late I um, had to work a, li a lot today sorry for that I hope still you couldn't do something with that video and yeah I will see you hopefully in the next video and yeah that's it See you, bye bye, have a nice evening, dinner time, night time, whatever time it is, bye bye. Hello, welcome back to Python and welcome back to Pandas and welcome back to NumPy. So why am I telling you welcome back to NumPy? That's because today's topic is combining NumPy arrays, two-dimensional arrays to be more specific, and our data frames from pandas and yeah that's kind of cool because pandas and numpy synergize as well and i already promised in my first video that we are using numpy in this series so let's import pandas let's import numpy as np and i hope you remember certain things about numpy but i will yeah use make a quick reminder First of all, let's create our randy equals np. Let's create a random numpy array which is two dimensional random point rand int from range 1 to 100 elf. This is, um, we are creating a four dimensional, uh, not four dimensional, 
dimensional, two dimensional array containing integers from 0 to 110. And here as a shape, which is the next argument, we have, we have firstly, we have our starting range, the ending range, then our shape and yeah, our shape is for rows, for columns, first the rows and the columns. And yeah, now if we're print, printing it, we print our random numpy array. Here we go. And what we want to do now, we want to create a data frame based on our randomly created numpy array. Pandi the cute panda equals pd point data frame. And we simply have to use as the input just the numpy array we created, like this. And yeah, we should print it. Sorry if my voice sounds strange, I'm a little bit sick still. Yes, now we have our numpy array. Uh, NumPy array our um, panda data frame. We have our column indexes, our row indexes, and we can even rename our row indexes like we know it from before. If we are typing index, e no, not like that, index equals a, b, c, double d, Here we go. And yes. This is but this is not everything we can do when we are using NumPy array. The fun part begins when we are yeah kind of calculating with statistics and creating bigger arrays and bigger data frames like four thousand rows. Let's just do that. 4,000 rows. Let's delete our index because it would raise an exception. We can't use index 4 with 4,000 rows. We also want 4,000 elements in the list when we are yeah, declaring the index. So we are just skipping that. And yeah, we don't want to print this data frame. Why don't we print it? We want to mess up our console. So maybe you remember from the first video of the Panda series, I described the function describe. Man, this is this is a joke and that lately I described the function describe. Describing how describe works. Look in the description. Okay, enough of that. PD data frame. No, 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 no. Print Pandy the cute pandy point describe and now what we get is interesting on the left side where we usually have our yeah indexes of the row we have count we have mean std we can skip because it simply means a standard deviation but we are not yeah, diving that deep, so we will skip that. The minimum value, the maximum value, and yes, he is showing, for example, the minimum values of every column, which is always zero because we are having 4000 rows, and yeah, these are plenty of options to get to the minimum uh, of the range and yes m we have plenty of options to get to the maximum of the range that's why he's always hitting 110 every time and 75 percent is nearly mostly the same 44 mean is kind of interesting because it is average so he's for example, counting. Count is 4,000, obviously, because we have 4,000 rows. Every column has 4,000 elements. And yeah, because we have 4,000 elements, mean is pretty easy to calculate because we are 
adding every number and yeah dividing them by 4000 getting 55 yeah and the lower 25 percent are 28 or lower 50 percent are 54 or lower and so on man I, it's hard to talk at the moment because my voice is cracking up but yeah i have to keep it up and yes we can even call the functions by the every function we can call the min getting the minimum which will always be zero the max getting the max which will not that did i do now he's because he's spitting the max of the rows but we want the max of the columns ah, okay here we go Yeah, now we have the max of the columns again. And because we have plenty of options, he will always hit the maximum. If we're decreasing it to 40, you should get a little bit more diversity. Here we go. Only one column got the highest possible value. The other ones are, yeah, it's a near of 110, but not reaching it. And yeah, the same goes for me. and so on and because numpy went it is much more yeah you can't only uh, create random in um, to just uh, random in arrays you can even calculate at which probability which number can be created and this can be ca ca a kind of interesting combined with the describe function or the function of data frame because you have many options to yeah calculate the output now what was not in the describe uh, function was sum which is also quite easy to understand because it's just the sum man i'm perfect ex <laughs> in explaining now what i wanted to say it's the sum of every integer if we say again 4000 but now getting m minus 100 can be more interesting and diverse because we are mostly hitting positive numbers let's be it more but now if we are yeah using very low negative numbers and the sum of 109 and 111 is nearing to zero so we are g even sometimes getting negative numbers while running it but yeah that's the sum it's just of all the rows the numbers of all the rows added we have also skew by the way i'm not showing every function i'm just yeah kind of giving an overview there are much more functions which is kind of yeah between yeah usually between one and minus one so skew kind of returns how symmetric our yeah frame is like if we are mm -hmm, where's the code let's type in skew and yeah it's like of the symmetry between um, expected output uh, yeah there's a difference between the accepted output and the real output because yeah the integers are randomly and if the number gets higher the skew should be getting lower does it or am i talking nonsense mm -hmm. i guess i'm talking nonsense 
Oh no, I'm not talking nonsense because I wanted to. Yeah, I'm not talking nonsense. Okay, I'm kind of relieved. Because I don't want to explain bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but that's um, everything about... Oh, that's a little overview of the functions you can do with your yeah data frame you created with a numpy array, a two-dimensional numpy array. You can also create a series with one-dimensional numpy array. And yes, that's everything for this part. I hope you kind of enjoyed the video. See you in the next video. Um, I wish you a wonderful evening, dinner time, night time, breakfast time, whatever time it is. See you and bye bye. Hello, welcome back to Python, welcome back to Pandas and today I want to show you a useful method which we can use to change row and column labels of our data frame and for that I already prepared a data frame. I just call the dictionary dic um, containing Mercury, U Uranus, oh God, oh, I shouldn't call the name or I can be I c could get a strike by using the planet's name. And yeah, Saturn. Saturn. Oh, I don't know how to call it in English. But n non, uh, that doesn't really matter. What matters uh, is we want to change these labels. And how do we change this label? With a new method called reindex. So let's uh, print it and be in the right function, uh, in the right tab like I am. You will get uh, the name of the columns as yeah, column labels and the rows are just sorted by numbers starting with 0 ending with 3. That was just like always a really quick reminder. Now let's create and this is also stuff of our previous videos. Let's change our index. like. comma index equals 0, 2, 3, 4, f as, yeah, like this. I mean like this. This will be the same index, so let's do it like this. Or let's be more creative, do it like this. Now let's use we index. So usually, um, not usually pdd equals pd point we we index and of course not pdd we index but pdd point we index now just using another index one 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 and yeah let's see what will happen as you can see, here is, yeah, the rows are named after the first index of our old data frame and they kind of inherited all the values, so it's always the same value. Like always the first value of Saturn, this planet and Mercury. And you maybe can expected already or you maybe um, will think it for yourself if we are using two three four you will get not a numbers for the remaining ones so it would be a little bit boring just to edit the row labels we can also yeah change the labels of the rows like this and of course because there is nothing saved he will always return not a number so we have to rely on an existing one like mercury and yes we get at least one value because the first value of yeah mercury 13 um, can be accessed through the index 1 and the index 1 is also in our new index so he gets the first one. 
so let's yeah fill the not in number ones and this can be pretty easy if we have for example want to set every not a number cell the same we can just use fill value and yeah everything gets a number too or we can use certain methods to fill the not a number ones like yeah forward fill now let's see what will happen nothing because I wrote it wrongly but if we want to use this method, we will get an exception. Index must be monotonic, increasing or decreasing. So you will think for yourself, okay, what does he mean with that? The columns, this is okay, but the columns in our original dictionary, which he is gonna re-index, are not mono, are beginning Mercury, Uranus, Saturn. And yes, that this is not monotonic, increasing or decreasing. So let me see, I guess it is just yeah enough if we are changing the names because yes now now it works. So what did we do now? We have our not a number values and yeah without a fuff I can delete this for show purpose. If we delete this he gets 13 and if we fill it we get 91 13 91 so what did he do here um, the middle column is pretty easy he just looked above because the 13 was already set and so oh there was a 13 we can I will just look the uh, value above and fill the rest cells which are still not a number with a 13 and yeah here it gets a little bit more tricky because now he doesn't have a value to look above so he is just looking okay in the dictionary what was the row I mean column with the uh, yeah what was the last um, entry the highest because s is the last letter on the alphabet uh, compared to the other ones not the last letter but it is a higher letter on the alphabet so he's seeing this is the biggest the value of all columns and seeing okay it has 91 so he's using that if we for example type in 22 you will use 22 because yeah He's looking at the highest of the columns. If it is A, B, M, it is not mono. Okay, it's not increasing anymore. If I mean, if we're using back now, I changed a B and an A. He can't find anything. So yeah. He's just filling not a number. Okay, but we don't only have the forward fill, we have the backward fill, B fill. And that's now he does the opposite. He looks at the upper one and sees okay, here's a 13. He fills in with 13. If not, is not a number here, 13 is already set. So he's looking at the next one, which is 24. He's so and here he is also looking at the next one 24 and because the next one is still 13 so it, it's getting lower he st uh, sticks to the 24 one so if we are typing 23 he jumps okay he sticks uh, to 24 even if we s say 23 yeah because I'm stupid he's only using one value he won't increase it anymore that's obvious okay so what's also important, we can even add new columns like PDD equals PDD, PDD point re index. Come on, re index. Sorry about the little cut. Now let's add some columns using re index. PDD equals, it's as simple as it sounds, point point re-index 
columns equals a mercury with also comma c and a a b b perfect now let's try to refill them Perfect. Now that's everything. We, there is much more you can do with reindex. Um, I just wanted to give the basic functions, like if we want to reindex something. The same is goes, by the way, for rows. If you want, what we can do with columns, can you do with rows? And yes, after telling you that, I wish you a wonderful evening, dinner time, night time, whatever time it is in your country. See you in the next video. And yes, I hope you had fun while coding. Bye bye. Hello and welcome back to Python. Welcome back to Pandas. And yes, welcome back to nothing because yeah, that's not important. What is important is the subject of today and this is data cleaning and yeah, while doing that, we want to look at some data cleaning functions which Pandas provides us with. So let's create a data frame. Import Pandas as PD. Let's create some series. And let's create a data frame out of this series. Okay, we created our data frame. Now let's add an index like and yes. Let's create other indexes like index equals a, b, c, d. And yeah, let's fill the remaining parts with datey equals datey point re index in, com in columns fill value equals 3. But I am st the problem is we don't add any columns. So let's add some columns like columns equals ABC. F. 
and these columns are filled with three. So let's just uh, use some functions we used already in reindex, but now we are using them to an existing data frame without reindexing, like b fill and f fill. Dati, dati equals dati point ff fill. Doesn't do anything, but let's do backwards fill. This also does not do anything because we need to fill the not the number ones. So let's add some indexes here. Now we should get a not a filled. We get, should get an yes. Say we get a data frame with, which isn't completely filled, but the rows aren't filled. Now let's use our dati f fill. Mm, dati equals dati f fill. And now he's filling them. And B fill. He can't fill them because it's before fill, so F fill will fill them. B fill would fill them if the if the first uh, row would be empty. Another way of data cleaning is uh, drop duplicates. So for this, we need identical rows. So let's get some rows. So we have D and F, which are equal rows. No, we have no equal. This are equal rows, I guess. Now dati equals dati point drop duplicates. And yeah, because B and C were identical, B was deleted, and yeah, A still exists. We can also convert our data types. For that, let's create a higher one. And yes, let's do dati equals <laughs> how it is called, S type. Dt point s like this. Okay, and I'm kind of getting old because s type was removed in the newest version, so this won't work anymore. What we can do, we can do ma math stuff like mm -hmm, dati equals dati point apps of dati. This should work. It does, but you won't see it because if I comment this out, we, we have minus and without we have the positive number. So some operations you know from math, uh, medical operations also work with data frames. The same goes by the way for round. We can round our data frame. Point three, point seven. And yeah, he automatically rounds it if we say round. 
otherwise he won't want it. Like here. And here again it is wounded. So what we can also do if we have a um, column with empty values. Okay, we don't need the fill value here. So we here we have some column w and one row with empty values. We can use the function data point. And if we are using drop now, we get an empty data frame. Why do we get that? Back to it. Let's look at our data frame and you see each row and each column has empty values. So let's again fill it at this point with fill value 2. Now let's use it again. And now he just deleted the row which contains a not a number. Let me just show it more. Okay, again without the fill value. I mean without the drop now. We have our E which has not a number. Now if we are filling them, if the columns are filled, you will only delete the yeah row uh, the row which doesn't have values or has value has cells in it without any value. So last function I wanna show you is the clip function. So for example we have some values above if we are using clip like two and four in our data frame we have values above uh, four and yeah lower than two and if we are using clip each will each with is higher than four will get to four and lower than two will yeah get two as a value pretty simple so that every uh, value in our data frame is between 2 and 4 and like this there are many other yeah, data cleaning functions you can sort uh, your data and stuff like that um, if I have functions I didn't mention here during the series I will explain them so don't worry this, are, this should be just an example of functions you can need for data cleaning. Hope you have a wonderful evening, dinner time, daytime, whatever time it is. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Hello, welcome back to Python. Welcome back to Pandas. And yeah, welcome back to this video. Now let's head to another function which is called log. Don't mistake it for the log which is kind of, yeah, de uh, some sort of debugging and don't mistake it for the log which is some kind of wood because we are not logging. We are, don't do anything with wood but we are looking at a new function. And yeah, in our last videos we did more focus on the columns. In this video we are more focusing on the rows. And with that in mind let's import pandas as pd like always and let's create our data frame which we call data equals pd point data frame. Now in square brackets we are typing a colon mm -hmm, one two three four as a list of course and yeah b some other numbers and of course C with other numbers I randomly put on my keyboard. Um, let's also use an index. Hell is 
Oh, I forgot a uh, fourth number here. Hell is coming for you. Sorry, I don't want to creep you out. Uh, this was just a sentence I heard in a film I watched. And yeah, now let's print data. Let's first print the data frame just to show you how it will look look without any alteration. And yeah, as you see, we have our columns. We have our yeah, we have our rows. And yeah, let's try to use our log function. And the first thing we are gonna do, we want to type in a row. And yeah, we get a uh, we get our row, of course, in a like a yeah like a panda series. So what is if we want to use multiple rows? If this should work, we need a, a list inside a list, like this one. And if we are using this, we can our yeah our data frame is showed like a data frame before, but uh, he's only showing the row which is selected. So we can add, for example, is. He will add another row. We can also repeat our is, so we are kind of copying it. And yeah, we can now type for you. Come. And yeah, for this we are kind of skipping the coming. Whoa. Here we go. So with the first kind of yeah, list we are deciding which of the rows we are printing, but now let's decide which columns are included. So let's for example type A, and now he is just printing A. Let's type another one, A. And because he's returning a data frame, we are easily even able to add another row with just typing another row. For this, we have to just type in data point log. Let's call it d equals 11. And di. And if we now adding di in our first list, like this. He adds the i and yeah, adds the num uh, fills the row with the number eleven. If we are adding more elements or just leaving it out, like this, without the comma, but of course with the oh, now I messed it up totally, like this. He added our new row, but with all the columns. And yeah, if we want to print all the rows, but for specific columns, we type a colon for which represents all of the rows. And then we are typing a list, but this list is for like the second list where we typed our names of the columns, typing a b. And now he's printing like before every row with the f yeah columns a and b or if we want a and a you can print a and a so what can we do now we can yeah show only rows which have a certain condition which has to be fulfilled so for example we have numbers and he should yeah print or give us every row where a is greater than 2. Let's try that. And we are doing that by the deity. Now the column is a. And now we are uh, typing our condition is greater than 1. 
And yeah, now he is only typing the rows where a is greater than 1. And yeah, if we are kind of... using higher values, the uh, rows which are eligible are getting smaller. And yes. We can have other conditions like equals, I guess it's obvious. So I guess I don't have to explain that. What else I can explain is slicing. For example, you have a list like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you want to print from the second element which is included to the third element or the fourth element which is not included so until from the second to the third and yeah we can do the same with our data frames with one exception because let's have a look if we are yeah having our rows like this hell this is possible hell to coming but in this case if i remember correctly without uh, the double square brackets yeah so what is kind of yeah not equal to the list slicing is that the uh, column after the uh, colon the coming one is also included while if you have index 1 to index 3 index 3 is not included but index 1 is included and we can also yeah do that for the columns like column a to column b this was for the rows i'm sorry if i named them columns uh, but now we are getting to the columns and yes, now he's just using the columns A and B. And what shouldn't work, if I um, remember him correctly, is using numbers. Yeah, because we the index is using strings. So we don't have a number index, we have a string index. But it should work if we type date date point index one. I guess like this. This is, this should be possible, but not if we are using the common slice method. By the way, which I forget to mention, but I had it on my script paper before. Uh, it's not that important, so you can kind of skip that, get to the next topic, skip the video and, or not the video, but skip some minutes or seconds. But I said, for example, you can print any, f any row which is, has elements greater than one. And you can simply add another conditions, conditions, condition. And this is kind of uh, interesting. You are not using the AND operator like you use when you um, have booleans. You can instead use the bitwise AND one. And yes, you have date B is smaller than 11. And yes. I guess for this one, what I forgot, you need brackets. If this was my mistake, we will see now. Oh, there's one. Let's see. Yeah, now we, here we go. Okay, second important thing about multiple conditions is that you need brackets and you can use the bit operator. So this gi should give us everything because now we are using the bitwise or operator. 
and one of the condition is fulfilled is always fulfilled so he is printing just everything of our data frame but if we are using the end operator this has to be fulfilled uh, each row where the column a has a value greater than one and each column b where the value is smaller than 11 and here we go let's just print Dati first, so we you can see the difference here. D and L. In this one, A is one and A is eleven, so both conditions are either in the first one or in the second one not fulfilled. Okay. So what uh, should we do uh, last before finishing? So the last ones are a little bit m a little bit more complex. Like, okay, the first one is pretty simple, self-explaining. So first one is pretty simple, but yeah, kind of useful. Like, we can just use lock. Lock. To set a new value. Like this, we set yeah, the first value in the first column to 22. First row and yeah, first column. And for the second one, let's create a lambda function. If you don't know what lambda functions are, I recommend watching a video about this or yeah, skip this part because yeah, we are using a lambda function. But it's pretty simple. With lambda functions, you can kind of Yeah, create well, really simple and easy uh, functions. Instead of writing a function with indentation or stuff, we can use just a line of code. And I got I hit the wrong keyboard. So what is important in this one? X is our data frame. Now we have, and this is kind of not the usual way you should use a data frame we have to kind not h hell was in thinking about another data frame i created hell and yes and yes this has to be a column not a well yes now with our new function okay we have to make a condition We can just use the f log fun. And yeah, we should print it. Yeah, and now he's uh, using this condition, which uh, in the function, he will use the log function and yeah, looking at each element in the column A and yeah this is probably everything I know about the f log function or everything important I know I hope you kind of liked the video feel free to leave a comment containing any sort of feedback and yeah I hope I see you in the next video and yeah, I wish you a wonderful evening, wonderful night time, wonderful dinner time, whatever time it is in your country. Have a great time, see you and bye bye. Hello ho ho and welcome back to Python, welcome back to Pandas and welcome back to the new part of the tutorial series. I guess we are at the ninth or 10th or 8th part but I, if I had to bet on something I would bet on the ninth part. So we are at the ninth part at pandas and yeah today we are gonna look at the cut function which is able to bin and discretize certain data which is a uh, yeah, common step in data analysis and with the cut function we can use to split and categorize data like we 
kind of did before but uh, yeah using certain bins and labels and yeah let me first uh, create a data frame I will skip this part so the video length won't be exceeded unnecessarily so here will be a cut so here we have our data frame which has just two series level and EP I think of certain characters which have a level and the EP is yeah kind of the EP which you have or let's use a no not HP gold yeah let's use gold because this is not really depending on the level of a character in a role-playing game and yeah now let's create a level bins like Okay, we are having a global variable level bins equal. Now we are giving the percentage of yeah, which uh, percentage which of the levels should be or which percent of the levels should be put in the data frame when I am printing or when I am doing the cut function. You maybe know what. I mean with it. Okay, let's do 40. And let's do kind of use labels for the bins. Level bin labels equals and now let's call them low medium by the way we won't uh, use a label for the zero one higher op unimaginable and if this labels ma will make sense by the way we didn't want to let's end with op if this makes sense we will see now because we are using the cut function which is data f and now let's name it uh, level level category or cat equals now okay let's print data frame again at the end and yeah, level cat equals data point cut. And yeah, of course, we are using the level like data f level and lay. Hmm. Okay, let's try the bins equals level bins and labels equals level bin labels now if we print it we have to use not da our data frame but pd I'm sorry now let's check again yes now he depending on the yeah percent he put uh, everything under the first 40 percent to low medium next one to medium 42 40 higher was 67 and okay op is not reachable because yeah you can't reach 100 but yes he kind of categorized everything depending on the level and yeah we can do the same with our we can do the same with our other category which is gold can use yeah of course we are typing gold we need gold and level bins 
gold bins are the same and gold bin labels yeah let's also do gold bin labels also do the same so gold bins because it's easier to compare level bins and gold bins for that gold bin labels let's check okay we get not a number i messed something up again because yeah we need to categorize them with higher numbers because we have higher numbers there okay i'm totally stupid let's do the low one for 400 600 6000 80000 and yeah like this let's look yeah now it looks better medium higher 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 low and yeah the first one is medium because he's between 400 and 600 the next one is higher because he is between 600 and 8000 and yeah so on if we are having something which is over hmm, how much is this 10 million like this yeah he is getting not a number because there is not any category uh, category which is uh, thumbs up op let me test if we pp if we doing pp yeah we have to need another value like yes this one but i don't think it will work yeah because ah no i have to add it here again delete this one delete this one okay i need one more yeah there we go now we can even reach pp because i just yeah i've mistaken my lists for that but yeah this can be used to categorize your values and add another column which is a category uh, category yeah now after add, um, or now after adding new categories as columns we can count them so we can count how many um, how much low medium high and so on was access so we can use a new function which is called value counts so let's again print data frame point data frames now level cat and yeah point value 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 counts this is this one and now we get uh, nothing because level cat doesn't exist but level cat does exist this one now we get a new series because which gives us how much categories were given low was given to eight values four get medium one got higher zero got op okay and yeah we could do this the same for level gold but yeah i don't think we need to do that because it's obvious what can what we get there so yeah you can also use the values count for other columns you don't have to uh, use cut before and yeah by that i am ready for today's video for today's panda tutorial video i hope you liked the video hopefully see you in the next video and yeah i hope you have a great evening dinner time night time breakfast time lunch time whatever time it is in your country see you and bye bye hello welcome back to python welcome back to numpy yeah today we wanna iterate through our yeah data frames we create with pandas after we 
kind of learned uh, certain methods to gain access to certain elements. Now we want to iterate through it. So let me create a data frame. I will pause this video or know the recording like this. So here we are, here's our data frame with we created some indexes. And yeah, now we have our problem which is we want to gain access to the elements but if we print them because our columns have such long names they won't, the cells won't be shown entirely. So what uh, is the problem of the solution? which was stupid. What is, what is the solution of this problem? We iterate through our data frame. Bum, bum. So what we can simply do, we can, like we iterate through a list, we can iterate through a data frame for what in funny frame print what? Not warning, what? And yeah, if we run our code, he will give us our columns. So if we type, if we print type of what, we get strings. And as you can probably know, we if we try to iterate through what, we uh, just get the certain letters, but we won't get the elements of our cell. So how can we get the elements? That is with using a function called iterose. Now if we print what, we get this mess of stored data and we are when we are asking type of what so the name what is more fitting as you probably expected when I typed it they are tuples so we can iterate through tuples so what happens if we iterate through it for string in or for stringle dingle in what print stringle dingle we get first of all the name of the column then we get the we are in the ouch column which is the first column we get saturn which is a label of the row one then hot coffee next one and so on and yeah then we get our next column starting with the name of the row then the element and so on as you can see here so what should we do now we can ask it again what our type is i'm doing uh, this kind of of things like asking the type because yeah when i first was uh, introduced to pandas for myself I had just a sheet and yeah an excel sheet and was asked to print them print the certain elements and this is how I found out how to iterate through that so that's uh, why I'm telling you type stringleding because if there's for example another package in your library you can do the same workflow and will maybe get the same results I hope so so we are getting first of all a string and then a uh, pandas core series because we can't iterate through string let's if not is instance stringle dingle or stringle dingle and yeah string for stri in stringle dingle print stri so as you can see what i'm doing now 
and we finally are printing the elements of our data frame I was asking if if uh, we are not uh, having a string so if not is is in instant uh, our stringle dingle what uh, we get when we iterate through what and if it's not a string we iterate again through our element getting a new element and then we finally get access to our elements that's kind of complicated if you ask me so are there methods to make this easier for example if we just wanna get the series out of our data frame this is kinda simple for s in funny frame point items print s we will get each of the series but yeah as a row so for example we are getting hot coffee which is a series my favorite planet is I won't t uh, tell you that as a series but yeah not with usually we have a column and yeah the content of the column is a series now we get the rows and yeah we can even um, get access to two things if we print yeah, uh, S and we print our L which is for the label we will get first of all the label and then the series and yes, through a series we should be able to iterate for e in s print e here we go so this is ca uh, much more simpler and yeah that's probably everything I wanted to show you in this video pretty simple pretty easy and yeah Maybe you did even find out how to iterate through your data frames. And I wish you a wonderful evening, wonderful night time, wonderful lunch time, wonderful dinner time, whatever time it is. See you and bye bye. And yeah, now come, I will give you some outtakes. Hello, ho, ho, welcome back to Python, welcome back to NumPy, and I guess you can't see the console, I should... Oh. Hello, ho, ho, welcome back to Python, welcome back to uh, Pandas, and yes, no, this is not... Hello, ho, ho, welcome back to Python, and welcome back to Pandas, and yeah, today we are looking or trying to merge data frames to one data frames and we can do that in different ways using the concat function and yeah, while doing that so, so mer merging means we are putting yeah different data frames to one data frame um, there are different outcomes depending on how we are using the concat function so first let's uh, easy let's do the easiest way by just Connie we are naming it Connie by the way I created three data frames and yeah these are just placeholders you can they are made as simply as possible but for the purpose of showing you how the concat function works it should be enough so Connie is pd point concat fdf sd i used stupid names i have to be hon honest on that and yeah if we are just um, doing the input like this we will raise an exception because the input argument is a list no is a list yeah and yeah we are getting a new data frame and I of course should print it print Connie and as you can see this is kind of confusing and yeah not easy to read because yeah 
the labels or the names of the rows begin with one and ends with two, but we have a lot of rows, more than just three, and it's just repeating itself after reaching the second, uh, no, third row, like the zero, one, two, zero, one, two, and so on. We don't want that, and yeah, what we can do first of all the mess now messiest but easiest way is adding indexes like AA, AB, AC. I will quicken this up. I will pause the video. Okay, I skipped the part because you don't wanna see me typing indexes. You want to see what the function does. So I added some new indexes for the rows or some new names for the rows. And as you see here, now it's much more uh, easier to read. In this case, A, 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 B, A, C, B, A, and so on. And yeah, what else? You may be accept it because we are in pa pandas, but yeah, just let me add a, a fourth data frame. But this one has an additional additional mm -hmm, an additional column and it has also an additional row so if we do it like this we would get an index error we have to add another index CD yes and this one are called D D A D B D, 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 C, and D, D. K. Yeah, and we have to add it to the list we are using as an argument for our concat. So there we go. Now he's just adding the column we defined in our last data frame. But he's because the other ones, other data frames don't have a D. As a column, he's just using not a number for that. And yeah, here he's adding 1, 2, 1, 1, so 1.0 because he's adding float numbers. But you see what I'm trying to tell you. He's just kind of fulfilling or filling everything up with not a number. Yeah, adding to that, we can, yeah, add a new axis like 1. 2 doesn't exist, but yeah, we can use 1. And what he's doing now, he is adding additional columns. So this is a little bit tricky. Why does he do that? Um, but it wouldn't be um, as tricky if we are deleting our indexes. Should I do that? Mm. Now let me explain, trying to explain it. Um, here it is A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, D. So he is thinking that this column is in different columns than this was, than in this one. So he's, after adding the first three columns and rows, he's now adding the fourth column and he's, yeah, kind of treating that column, the A of S, E, D, F, no, I don't want to debug, the A of S, D, F is an additional column. And because the first two rows, A, 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 B, and A, C, don't have individual values for the new A, the new column, it, they will fill it up with not a number. And yeah, because our new uh, row indexes don't have uh, we don't have values for the old columns. Everything will filled up in not a number. And yeah, this goes on until he's left with, is ready with every data frame. Okay. So yeah, because he's kind of seeing these as individual columns, he's not seeing uh, the left, the rows as individual ones. So if we are just, let's delete them. Now look what will happen. He, yeah, he adds. He has just the automatically um, used indexes zero to three, and yeah.
because only the fourth data frame has a uh, four series in it. The fourth row will be filled with not numbers for the first three data frames. Yeah, it's kind of self-explaining. So now let's get our indexes back. And yeah. Sometimes when we have our data frames, we have columns that should be added to other ones and sometimes not, like this one should be added to AA, this one also, and this one to BB. And now if we are doing just that he will yeah kind of add the rows so because we have more index AA he is adding the rows together so now let's get back to axis 0 and let's add a new argument with its join and let's set it to outer so nothing happens why? Because outer join, and now it's important, outer join is the default mode. Yeah. What happens when we do inner join? Now let's do inner. We will just get the three columns because he's kind of cutting everything away which has not a number. So if we have access one, we get an empty array because, yeah, each of the rows or columns, I guess, um, everything has not a number. Let me check it. Yeah, everything has not a number. He's, If I'm correctly, he is yeah, cutting out every column which contains not a number. But to be sure, let's add AA. No. I mean, um, no, I mean it not like that. I mean it like that. Yeah, and if we are now, let's let's check it. If we are now using join inner, he will give us the first line. So if I would, and yeah, let's now use one column like this one, zero. Yeah, he is, you, um, it, if he has a full column or a full row, depending on the axis, he will just join everything which is, yeah, he will cut out everything which has not a number, like that. So again, one should again give us an empty one. No, of course not, I'm sorry, and it will give us a row. And yeah, let's set it back to default. Yeah, and what I before I'm uh, finishing, I want to yeah I want one a oh no it's not possible, <laughs> I just realized that, so it doesn't matter. Okay, and yeah with that I'm finished. So yeah you can use join to just decide what is uh, uh, what kind of columns are added to the data frame or not, and yeah was telling you that I'm finished. I hope you could yeah understand what I was trying to tell you. Yeah it gets more complicated every video but I hope you could yeah get what I'm saying and yeah hopefully see you in the next video. Have a great dinner time, evening, night time, whatever time it is. See you and bye bye. Hello ho ho welcome to uh,